So if you're an auto detailer looking to hire a marketing agency to try to increase the leads and the customers coming into your business, this video is gonna be very helpful for you. What's going on guys? Luke here with Wilson Auto Detailing. I own an auto detailing business that operates out of Nashville, Tennessee, as well as the online business here that teaches detailers exactly where to get the hands-on training and the business training they need to not just start, but grow and scale quickly, learning from the mistakes that I made and many other people made. Now, speaking of mistakes that I made, I wanna talk about marketing agencies because this is something that so many detailers waste so much money on. So as you guys see the Rolodex of videos that is gonna be in the background here playing in terms of me detailing, these are all vehicles that came in originally from ads. And so at this point in my business, I have spent somewhere around half a million dollars in ad spend total. And so I think that I have some context to tell you guys what I did that did not work, what did work, and how to build a relationship with a marketing agency that will be helpful to you. Now the first mistake I wanna highlight that I made when I was working with marketing agencies in the beginning is that the reality is I just didn't have enough context to ask them the right questions. In other words, I did not have a context to measure their results against. And so I was paying marketing agencies either a profit share or on retainer, and generally marketing agencies, even in the detailing world, are relatively expensive to what most detailers make, but you're paying you know thousands of dollars a month without a context to judge the work that they're producing. And so you just kind of go on and on in this hamster wheel of kind of feeling like you're not getting the results you want, but feeling like you can't say that to them because they keep telling you that they're producing leads for you. And so the way that I would title mistake number one that I made was that I did not set clear expectations expectations because I did not have clear thresholds for success and for failure. And the reason why I did not have clear thresholds for success and failure is because I really didn't know what I was doing. It was my first time ever running ads and so I had no idea how to measure what was good or what was bad. So let me give you guys some clear success thresholds that I developed after years and years and years of working with marketing agencies and now I have all that in-house in terms of the people who run ads for me. They actually work for me. But that being said, here are some metrics you can use that helped me. Number one. When a lead comes in, do I have clear ways to contact them? And I made that plural on purpose. Do I have at least one, but preferably more than one way to actually get in touch with the lead? Secondly, do we have a mechanism by which to contact the lead within a certain period of time? Generally speaking, under 12 hours. If we can do it, under six hours. And if you can do even better, under an hour would be amazing. Contacting the lead very, very quickly. And the third thing that I have to say that sounds so, so obvious, but I want to explain the numbers behind this is, are the ads super, super profitable? Well, I just wanna say the most obvious thing that I think a lot of detailers feel like they can't say because they're always feeling like the marketing agency knows more than they do. And so it's this weird relationship where the detailer is like, I keep voicing my concerns, but the marketing agency keeps telling me that everything's okay, and so I just kind of keep paying them. Here's the costs that are going into the ad spend. Number one, how much money did you spend on the ad? Let's just pretend you're spending on Google. If you're spending $2,000 a month to put ads ads in front of certain amounts of eyeballs, then you are spending $2,000 a month in ad spend. Let's just say that you spend another $2,000 a month on retainer for the marketing agency. We can say the true cost of your ad spend is about $4,000 per month. Well, now we need to pull back and look at the total revenue of the business. Let's just pretend that the total revenue of the business per month is $10,000 per month. So we say, hey, there's a $6,000 disparity. Let's just pretend like there's no other cost, no taxes, nothing. You have $6,000 in profit. That's amazing. But the next question question becomes, is the marketing agency clearly attributing their efforts to the profit you're making? In other words, can they separate out that $6,000 of profit into like a pie chart where we say, hey, this 50% came from really your organic social media or your organic Google My Business listing or your organic presence before we ever started working together. This 50% came from the ad spend. Let me show you how we are attributing this and how we are tracking this data so we can actually tell you we spent X amount of dollars and got you X amount of dollars. Now this leads me into the second big mistake that I made, and this is really what I would call just attribution errors. So in the marketing world, you have to understand that the word marketing is kind of this catch-all term. So you have students graduating from college with a four-year communications degree. They know absolutely nothing, but they call themselves social media experts. We started a marketing agency. We got these three clients to pay us. So now all of a sudden we know what we're doing. The reality is marketing is a catch-all term. And so when somebody tells me that they own a marketing agency, one of the first questions I ask is, what's your primary type of clientele? In other words, what industry do you service primarily? Most of them generally stick within a certain niche. My second question is, give me a little bit of insight into the softwares and systems that you use in your marketing. The reason why I ask that is because I'm versed enough in the online world now to know when somebody tells me certain names of softwares they use, I can, with a pretty high degree of accuracy, judge how 
correctly or how accurately they're giving numbers to the clients that they serve. And so again, this leads me to my second point, which is attribution. In the marketing world, understand that most marketing agencies make their money because they stay ambiguous with the client. And my goal here is not to try to demonize marketing agencies or say that they're all like this. I'm telling you this side of things so that you can look for the other side of things. So if you don't have really clear ad spend, really clear attribution, then you don't have really clear data to say, this is what you're worth to me. For every $1 you spend, you make me $5. Or for every $1 you spend, you lose me 50 cents. And so here are a couple questions to ask your marketing agency that will probably help you tease through the ambiguity. The first thing that I would wanna set up on the front end before I started working with a marketing agency is to say, hey marketing agency, because I already have some sort of established detailing business, even if it's only making $100 per month, I'm gonna tell them I have customers coming into my business apart from ads already. Before we start working together, I wanna make sure that there are clear systems and softwares that we're going to use together so that I can separate the business you're bringing into my business from the business I'm bringing into my business. Because whatever type of payment structure you and I set up, whether it's a retainer, a profit share, you know, whatever it is, I wanna make sure that it's being paid to you based on the efforts you are bringing to my business. And I don't want those two things to get mixed up because I'm already established over here. I'm not asking you to come in over here. I'm asking you to bring in new business. And then after I say that, I would wanna see how they react to that. Do they think that's crazy? Do they think that's totally reasonable? And assuming that they think that's totally reasonable, my next question would be, will you walk me through the measures you use to track data so that we can easily see the leads that are coming in directly from the ads that I am running with you, keep those people in their own little pool, and then judge how many of those leads are converting into customers over, let's say, a 90-day period. You see how I just set up a success metric? We're gonna put a beginning and an end point to it. We're gonna work together for 90 days. I'm gonna run ads in a way that you describe where you've seen the most success. I wanna make sure that all of those ads bring in leads that are contained over here separate from the business that I already have, and then we can judge how many of those leads convert into customers over a 90-day period. That's how I'm gonna judge the success of this relationship. I think a lot of detailers think that they're not allowed to do that because marketing agencies might come back and say, well, it's not quite that simple. Well, we need a little bit more time. Well, we're gonna have to lose money before we make money. And there is truth to some of those things, but those are all kind of half-truths that keep people in the ambiguity over a long period of time, and it ends up really helping you waste money. And the third mistake that I made in dealing with marketing agencies was not allowing myself to make the marketing as simple as it really was. Let's zoom out and think about it really simply. Marketing agencies make money by keeping clients like you and I. Well, if you and I figure out that, oh, there's no real magic to this, then the marketing agencies in some sense lose that dependency relationship and therefore they lose the revenue. And so they are incentivized to keep you as the detailer on board. What is an ad for a detailing business? An ad is nothing more than a piece of video or picture that is put in front of some type of hopefully qualified person in a particular area that either gets them to take an action or they skip over the ad. That's it. And so what is the job of the marketing agency given that that's what an ad is? Well, one of the jobs for a marketing agency might be to make sure that the copy and the creative of the ad is dialed in to get clicks. Well, because ads are these input-output mechanisms where you can literally judge how they're performing in real time, one of the things that I would expect a marketing agency to do for me as a detailer is to say, hey, Luke, we're going to need a whole handful of different ads with different copies, with different hooks, with different offers to see what performs best in this particular area. Here's the time frame we're gonna run over these ads. Here's the budget we're gonna assign to each one of these. And here's how we're gonna respond to you or report back to you as to what we think we should be spending the money on the most. That would be a big green check mark in my book given that that's all an ad actually is. And that's the only way to judge whether or not it's working well. The other thing that would be a big green check mark in my book is if the marketing agency said, hey Luke, you know, I know that it's easy to run ads with doing like discounts and low lowering your price, but that's kind of the cheap way to get clients. We have a few other things that we'd like to try. Here's what they are. The reason why I say that is because the cheap 
receipts for the detailer running ads is always gonna be the ad that says 50% off, 25% off. And those things are appropriate in certain contexts. But what I'm saying is it's kind of the preschool of running ads. You know that at some level it's gonna get clicks because you're discounting your price. But the problem with discounting your price is that it's a race to the bottom. And so the only way to get that ad to perform really well over a sustained period of time is to continue lowering the price. It's the only way to get people to continue to engage. And so it's a very, very short term strategy. It's kind of like putting a tourniquet on your leg when you're bleeding out. It's like, yeah, you'll probably not die, but you will have to cut your leg off. And then the third huge green check mark that I look for in any marketing agency is hyper, hyper, hyper OCD from them with how they communicate with me. In other words, they communicate clearly and they communicate often. Again, that is what avoids the ambiguity and it's what tells me that the marketing agency is confident in what they're doing. Ambiguity? is kind of equivalent to we don't know what we're doing. So we're trying to keep things in the dark and keep you from asking good questions. When you can ask good questions or even better, you don't have to ask good questions because they get ahead of the question and they're showing you what they're doing, how they're doing it, why they're doing it, and what they're gonna use to judge success or failure. That is a green check mark marketing agency that you can probably have a long-term relationship with. And the very last thing, and I say this for the last because if you're still on this video, you're probably a detailer who's really considering getting a marketing agency, the best type of relationship that I have ever had as a detailer with a marketing agency is one where the agency looks at our relationship and says, hey Luke, this is temporary. You don't need us forever. What we're going to do is implement this new project. Here's how we're going to judge success or failure. Here's the time frame. Here's the budget. Here's the inner workings of it. Let's sit on an hour Zoom call so we can show you exactly what's going on. And then once we establish success with this project, we're going to give this back to you and you can continue to to use us if you want to, and you can continue to pay us. But if you don't, you can onboard someone else for less money, give them this project, and if we still have new things to add to your business, we will add those things, and we'll take you through the learning curve of showing you what they are, showing you how to do it, and we'll teach you. And that's where I say the best marketing agencies have the word agency in their name for a reason. They give agency back to the business owner. They're not trying to take agency away from you and keep it there as long as they can squeeze money out of you. They they look at the relationship and say, it's temporary, we're gonna teach you what we do, and then you can go do it on your own with other people, or you can keep us because you just love us. That's an amazing relationship with the marketing agency. It's also a relationship with an agency that doesn't need you and need your money, and it's part of what makes them perform really, really well. Guys, if this was helpful, hit the like button, comment below. This is gonna get barely any views because most detailers don't care about this because they're not building a real business. They just wanna buy more products, but if you watch this, you are probably a legitimate business owner, and uh, I'll also link up uh, just a link to my website below in case you guys want to get in touch with me. I'll put a uh, link to the about page where you can submit some comments and some questions to see if I can help you with anything specifically. Hopefully you guys got some value here and you can use this to actually scale your business to the next level and then maybe we can work together on a more private basis. As always guys, thank you so much for watching and from Luke here at Wilson Auto Detailing. Remember a great detailer is always learning and I'll see you in the next video.